Hello there, Lunar Squadron, and welcome back to the channel. This is where the fun begins. Now, as you all know, Jedi Survivor has done a great job of blending various different eras of the Star Wars universe. You have the High Republic era, you have the prequel era, and you have the original trilogy era all together in one game. But today, we are going to be talking about the top 10 prequel trilogy Easter eggs and details in Jedi Survivor. These are all of the fun things that we found while we were exploring around the various planets in Jedi Survivor. We cannot wait to share this list with you. But first, if you're new to the channel, we would love to have you as always in the way to do that. Just go down below this video, hit that little subscribe button, the bell notification right on next to it. It will notify you every single time Andreas and I upload the latest and greatest Star Wars and Jedi Survivor content. Now with that out of the way, Andreas, why don't you go ahead and kick off this list? Sure thing, Nick. The first Easter egg here that I absolutely love is the XJ6 speeder that is located in the Coruscant Underworld, and you can also find one on Kobo, but the one that was very striking to us was on Coruscant because it took us straight back to Attack of the Clones, particularly the uh, sequence in Attack of the Clones with the Oscura District where uh, you had... Anakin hot wiring a custom XJ6 and then ultimately Obi-Wan takes over that XJ6 airspeeder and then lands it right outside of that Outlander club where they both you know chase Zam Wessel and you guys know how the movie goes so we could take it from there but what I love about this easter egg is at least for the speeder that's located on Coruscant Jedi Survivor it's covered with this uh this tarp almost and so you might miss it if you're not paying close attention, but if you if you really kind of dig in there and look under the under that tarp, you can see that it is a very similar speeder. Now, one key detail to note here is the number on the front of that speeder it says 86. I don't think that number per se was on the same speeder that was featured in episode two, but it looks like it's the same model nonetheless. It might not be the exact same speeder, and I'm not quite sure how, you know, the crash speeder from the Oscura district would end up in the, the underworld, but you never know what ends up in the underworld. And uh, one fun fact here is, as you all know, Grand Theft Speeder is not a victimless crime, and uh, there certainly was a victim to Anakin's hot wiring of this XJ6. That XJ6 in Attack of the Clones belonged to Senator Simon Grayshade, who was a wealthy representative of the Vorzid sector, and he owned a custom special modified version of the XJ6, which is why Anakin picked it, because he thought that it was the fastest one in the parking lot. The, the more you know, the better, guys. Coming up next on our list is another Attack of the Clones reference. You'll find as we go throughout this list, there's actually a handful of Attack of the Clones references in Jedi Survivor. And this one is the WA-7 Waitress Droid poster that is in Pylon Saloon on the planet of Kobo. Now, when Andreas and I went out to Los Angeles for the preview event for Jedi Survivor, this was one of the first details we actually picked up on in the entire game. Right when we got to Pylon Saloon, we found this poster almost immediately, and both of us turned back towards the devs with the most disbelief look on our faces because we were so excited to see an Attack of the Clones, a prequel trilogy reference in Jedi Survivor, and we love this one. Of course, this is the droid, this is the waitress droid in Dex's diner in Attack of the Clones when Obi-Wan goes to visit Dex with some questions about his missing planet, and this droid offers him some Jawa juice. <sighs> Want a cup of juice? Oh yes, thank you. Absolutely love this moment in the film. It's one of our favorite moments. We always make, we joke about it all the time. We reference it all the time. And we were so excited to see this poster featuring this droid in Jedi Survivor. The next prequel Easter egg that I love that's in this game is the crashed LAAT Republic gunship that is on Jedi. When I first saw this in the game, I was so very excited because it was just another prequel reference and on Jeddah of all planets. I was very happy to see this Republic gunship because who doesn't love a good Republic gunship to spice up your planet? This is one of my favorite details from Jeddah and it just makes me want to go explore the whole desert and see if there are any other Republic era ships that are crashed around the place. Let me know if you guys have seen any other of these ships crashed around the deserts of Jeddah in Jedi Survivor. 
Next up on our list is the fact that Obi-Wan's Hermit skin actually features his Clone Wars general armor. If you take a look at the back of Cal, you will see the shoulder pads that Obi-Wan is famous for wearing in the Clone Wars television show. You will see the Republic logo on it. We thought this was just a cool element of this skin because in our walkthrough, we talked about how this skin features all of the different eras of Obi-Wan all combined into one. We mentioned the Episode 3 appearance, and we mentioned how he was wearing the wrist guard similar to what Obi-Wan was wearing. But if you look very carefully on his back, you will see that clone general armor shoulder pads. Just a cool little touch there from Respawn. Our next favorite prequel Easter egg in Jedi Survivor can also be found in Pylune Saloon, just like the WA-7 waitress droid posters. This time, I'm talking about the various clone trooper helmets that are featured throughout the saloon. I believe there's one on one of the beams that's running across the front of the saloon, and then there is another one that is back by Cage Vanda, just very cool to see these little prequel touches throughout the Pyloon Saloon and throughout Kobo in general. So this is one of our favorite Easter eggs. It's something that we definitely uh, love to look around. We, we spent a good part of an hour last night looking at the saloon in photo mode and appreciating the various details around the saloon. And the Clone Trooper helmets were definitely one of our favorite little Easter eggs that were featured there. The sixth item on our list actually has to do with customization, and we're talking about customization items for BD-1. And there are actually a handful of prequel references in these customization items. If you saw our customization video earlier this week, you might have caught them. This is in reference to the fact that you can get Geonosian and Kaminoan components for BD-1. So for all of you who are wondering if Geonosis does make an appearance in Jedi Survivor, in a roundabout way, yes, Geonosis is in Jedi Survivor, but instead of being that planet, which turned out to be Jedi, just like we said it would be, instead of it being that planet, it's actually Geonosian components for BD-1 and Kaminoan components for BD-1. So just some cool references to the Star Wars lore and to the prequel trilogy with Geonosis and Kaminoan components. The next Easter egg here is the Jedi Holocron that is located on the Stinger Mantis. Now this one is more of a Fallen Order Easter egg because as you all know, this is the Holocron that Cal made the decision to slice in half, thus precluding the Empire from obtaining a list of Jedi Padawans which were scattered throughout the galaxy and force sensitive individuals. However, uh, it's just an interesting bit of lore here that Holocrons made their first canonical appearance in an episode of the Clone Wars called Holocron Heist. So it technically does date back to the Clone Wars and to the prequel era. But even before their appearance in Star Wars, the Clone Wars, Holocrons were originally developed for a Legends comic series called Star Wars Dark Empire, which was published all the way back in 1991. So Holocrons do have a deep history in and around the prequel era. And what we know from Fallen Order is that Master Cordova originally retained the Holocron that Cal ended up with from Jocasta New. And any time that Jocasta New is relevant, prequels are relevant because, as we know, If an item does not appear in our records, it does not exist. Coming up next on our list is an Easter egg or a detail that you might have seen featured in our Coruscant breakdown prior to Jedi Survivor releasing. This was shown off in a couple different trailers for Jedi Survivor in the background. Of course, we are talking about the door that is almost exactly the same as the door for the Outlander Club in the Escuru District on Coruscant. However, this door is in the underworld of Coruscant, but if you take a look at it and compare it to the door of the Outlander Club, it is damn near identical. It even features almost the exact same writing that is on the Outlander Club. Now, we went and did some digging 
extensive digging, to be honest, looking for what exact language this was on the Outlander Club door, and we were not able to pinpoint an exact match. So down below in the comments, if you know what writing is on the Outlander Club door, we would love to know. We love learning more about Star Wars lore. That's one of the favorite things that... That's what makes this channel so special to us, is the opportunity to learn more about Star Wars. So if you know what the writing is on the Outlander Club door, please let us know down below in the comments. But back to this door in Jedi Survivor. Again, if you compare it to the Outlander Club door from Attack of the Clones, again, another Attack of the Clones reference, and surprisingly, not the last reference from Attack of the Clones. But if you compare the two doors, they are damn near identical. Just a cool shout out to the prequel trilogy from the team over at Respawn. Speaking of the Outlander Club, if you will have noticed in the background uh, during Attack of the Clones when Obi-Wan and Anakin are walking through the Outlander Club, you can see a few sports that are playing in the background. One of these sports is Nuna Ball. Now, if you guys didn't know about Nuna Ball, Nuna Ball involves an animal known as a Nuna, which is also known as a swamp turkey, which is a type of diminutive biped that lived in the swamps of the planet Naboo. Now, I couldn't teach you the rules of Nuna Ball because I don't know them, but one thing that we noticed when we were going through Coruscant last night, casually translating every single one of the neon signs for the better part of three hours, Nick and I discovered this sign, which translates in Arabesh to Nuna Ball, which is a great reference to the Nuna Ball that was played in the background in Attack of the Clones. Such a great reference. I love this one. And it's just another one of those things that Nick was talking about where we love learning the deep cuts of Star Wars. So next time someone asks you your favorite sport, tell them Nuna Ball. Throw them off. It's about a swamp turkey. Good sports, guys. The 10th and final item on our top 10 prequel Easter eggs and details is more of a detail and less of an Easter egg, but just given how cool this was to both Andreas and I and how much this meant to both of us, this one absolutely had to be on the list. And of course, we are talking about the fact that when you go up to one of the MTTs on Kobo, more notably in that fort with all of the Bedlam Raiders, you will notice that the MTT actually opens up with the droids and places them out on the battlefield just like it does in the beginning of The Phantom Menace. Now, this might not be much of an Easter egg, but this is a damn cool detail from the prequel trilogy and just really took us back to our childhood watching The Phantom Menace. I remember this scene where the MTTs open up on Naboo and you see all of the droids come out and you're like, Holy shit, that is a massive droid army. It's just one of my favorite moments from episode one. So again, might not be much of an Easter egg, but it's such a cool detail and it really brought me back to my childhood. It was another one of those details that we ran into during our preview event. And when it happened, we were playing this game alongside devs and Andreas and I were, I kid you not, losing our shit in the middle of this room, freaking out to the devs about how cool this was and we couldn't believe they actually did something this cool and this much of a prequel reference in their game. It, was, it meant the world to us. We really loved it. So, of course, this had to be featured on our list. This one is just more of a detail than an Easter egg than anything. But, damn it, it's cool, so it's going on the list. So, guys, there you have it. There are our top 10 prequel trilogy Easter eggs and details in Jedi Survivor. We scoured all of the planets looking for these details. If you found any more prequel trilogy Easter eggs and details, please... Down below in the comments, let us know. We want to see them. We want to hear all about them. We want to go find them for ourselves. So if you've noticed anything else that we left off this list, please let us know. Anyway, that is going to do it for us for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, we will see you all next time.